Okay, it's time for our next cheap electronics kit build. This particular one is an HA5083. I bought this off eBay and it's advertised as a laser harp. So either it's a musical instrument or it's some sort of deadly weapon or maybe a combination of the two. Uh, so we'll build it and uh, see which one it is. This is how it arrived, uh, no instructions and I uh, had a quick look online and you can find instructions online uh, for how to build this but rather than follow those I thought we'd just put this together and try and figure out uh, how to assemble it and uh, see what we end up with. As ever this is not a full review of this kit this is just a bit of fun to see um, if this is worth the money I paid for it. I paid £15 for this delivered and um, we'll see uh, how it goes together if it's fun and uh, whether it is uh, in my opinion worth buying. So step one let's open the bag and see what's in here. So it's a bit more expensive than the usual kits I do but um, it seemed quite interesting so I thought I would uh, buy it. Usual low quality board not too bad but uh, we'll see how well that solders. Nice selection of components. It's nice to see that the ICs or the IC is in a socket. And then it looks like we've got all the various bits of hardware and uh, all the components we need to actually assemble this. So let's get started. Step one is I'm going to fit all the resistors and uh, we'll see uh, how well this board takes solder. Before I go ahead and just fit all the resistors, I thought I'd just mention how I go about forming the resistor leads for boards like this. I do an awful lot of uh, assemblies, um, not so many kits, but I do a lot of development work and I do find myself assembling uh, lots and lots of boards that need uh, quite often quite a few resistors. So rather than forming all the resistors by uh, hand, which is difficult, and, uh, but it is time consuming and tedious, and uh, also I like the boards to look fairly neat when I'm finished. It doesn't really make any difference to the uh, functionality of course, but I just like things to look neat. So what I do is I start off by taking the resistors, normally come like this. I cut off the tape, spin it around, cut the tape off the other side. And then what I end up with of course is a pile of resistors. And rather than forming all these by hand, uh, what I do is I tend to make up a special tool, something like this, and uh, the, if you want to do something like this, then the form that you make the tool in is entirely up to you. It's uh, whatever your uh, imagination desires really, but all the tool does is you pop the resistor into a recess. There are kind of guide slots and the profile where the resistor is going to be bent is um, it's fairly precise, but you can zoom right in with the CAD program so you can make it whatever uh, style you want. The lever comes down, it forms the leads, you can see it's kind of folded them into the slots and then when you lift this out it lifts the resistor out and then this resistor is formed to fit perfectly into the board so that will now fit. It's a perfect fit in the slot and of course I can now repeat that and uh, the board will look much neater when it's finished. So that's how I go about doing this. Uh, as I said, um, you can make these in whatever shape you want, but I thought I'd just mention that this is worth considering if you do a lot of uh, assembly work. It does make uh, quite a nice neat job, uh, but it um, doesn't need to look like this. You can make it look like whatever you want. Okay, well that's all the resistors fitted. As you can see, the tool makes quite a nice job of forming the resistors. 
so you get nice neat uh, appearing boards. Uh, you don't need to do that, it doesn't really matter if it looks nice, but uh, I just like to have uh, boards that look neat and tidy. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to fit is the IC socket. Uh, I'll fit the uh, two capacitors for the crystal, the main smoothing capacitor, and um, the crystal, and then we'll go from there. Okay, again there was a spare component, so we'll put that to one side for now. The next thing I'm going to do is fit the LEDs. So looking at what's in the kit, there appear to be uh, a number of red and a number of green LEDs. So there are three green, so I'm going to put those in this position and the number of reds seems to match the row across the top, so I'll put the reds there. Um, make sure they're the right way around of course, and um, once we've got those fitted we can start fitting some of the uh, more mechanical parts. Okay, so that's all the LEDs fitted. I would say this board is uh, soldering extremely nicely, it's um, very easy to solder and um, it uh, does make it much easier to assemble the kit. So the next thing I'm going to do is fit the sounder, the transistor, the uh, four pin uh, socket here, switch, and the power socket, and then we'll go from there. So the kit's going together reasonably well. As I say, it's very easy to solder. Um, you can see that it's one of these kits that somebody's putting um, a lot of these together very quickly. So things like this, this is the four pin socket, or four pin header I should say. Um, it actually has five pins, so whoever cut this off um, was rushing and um, uh, it, can, it could be confusing if there was a lot of these, but as there's only one, uh, obviously it's just um, being cut wrong. Very easy to trim off of course, but it is the nature of these low cost kits and um, something that you kind of uh, work around and it's part of the fun of building them. It's um, it's interesting to see what you find in these kits as well as um, assembling the kit itself. Okay, that's all what I would refer to as the mechanical parts fitted, so switches, sounder, uh, the four pin header and the main power socket. We seem to have another spare component, so I'll put that to one side. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is fit the uh, optical sensors, or at least provisionally fit them. Um, I think, looking at the parts in the kit, that they're supposed to go into these uh, two pin sockets, then I think you just trim them down to the appropriate length. Um, saves you damaging the sensors by soldering them to the board. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fit uh, one of these two pin headers in each of these positions, and then we can start looking at fitting the optical sensors. I'll probably leave them a bit too long to start with and uh, quite what length they're supposed to be is a bit of a mystery. Again, the uh, variation in length in the, uh, the heat shrink tubing doesn't really give you much of a clue. I suspect it's not critical, it's just really uh, as long as they are in line with the lasers at the top. I think the way this works is the lasers shine down from the top, they're picked up by the optical sensors, and then when you break the beam, it uh, produces a tone. So uh, that's the uh, basis I'm assembling this on and um, so I'll get these sockets fitted and uh, we'll go from there. Okay so I've got these two pin headers fitted and the next thing I'm going to do is trim down the photo sensors and uh, what I'm looking for is to probably have the photo sensor just a short distance from the end of the um, heat shrink tubing and um, probably, in fact, probably about halfway up so what I'm going to do is find the shortest piece of tubing, trim all the rest to match, and then cut the length of the leads so that when this is pushed into the socket, it finishes uh, probably about halfway up the uh, length of tubing. I don't know if that's correct or not, but that's uh, what I'm going to do, so hopefully that will work. Okay, I've cut all the tubing to the same length. Again, we've got an extra component here, so I'll put that to one side. And the next thing I'm going to do is fit the sensors. As you can see, I've trimmed the length of the leads, and hopefully now when I push these into the connectors, 
then when I fit the heat shrink to the outside it's going to shield the uh, sensor and um, prevent it from being triggered by stray light. So we'll just push that down onto there, do the same thing six more times. Okay, so that's those fitted. If we wanted to, of course, we could uh, shrink the tube slightly to reduce the size of the opening, but I'm going to leave it unshrunk for now and uh, see how we get on. Um, next thing I'm going to do is uh, start assembling the frame. So the top frame is in three pieces. We've got the top section that presumably is for mounting the uh, actual uh, lasers, but I think this just goes around in a loop, so I've got a feeling these just slot together starting at one end, going around, and then going down. Uh, but before we do this, that, they're all identical, so um, to stay on the board, ground and VCC, so we know which way around to connect these, which is this way. So what we're going to do now is fit the lasers, so they're poking down. I'll glue those to the board, trim the leads to length, and then get the, them soldered on. Again, these are marked. Uh, minus and plus. I just need to make sure that this is fitted the right way around. So that's uh, what we'll do next. Uh, unfortunately the markings are on the top and the bottom of the board. It looks like they originally intended for these to be soldered onto the uh, PCB so uh, I might have a go at doing that with one of them but um, I don't really want to overheat the uh, diode. It will obviously destroy it so we'll have a look and see what the best solution is for mounting these. Okay, so I've assembled the top laser uh, emitter bar. I decided to solder the housings onto the board. If you're not comfortable soldering um, something like this, then you can just glue them in place. It's important, of course, not to overheat the um, diode that's inside of this. Um, but they soldered quite nicely. I just um, used a bit of uh, very fine abrasive paper to clean up the housing, bit of flux, and then it soldered on quite nicely. They may need adjusting in terms of the direction they're pointing, um, which should just be a case of uh, applying the soldering iron and then giving a, a bit of a tweak. I only soldered them on one side, so they should be fairly easy to adjust. And so I think the next uh, step uh, is to solder these onto the end like this and then it forms a frame and uh, I think we can then move on to the final step of fitting the controller IC and powering it up. Okay that's the frame assembled and this is just a matter of putting some uh, solder fillets and uh, making sure that the whole thing is square. So final step we'll get the IC plugged in and uh, we can then power this up and uh, see if it's a weapon or a musical instrument. Okay, that's the IC fitted. I do have some parts left over. Hopefully these are just spares. I can't find anywhere to actually fit them. Uh, I've got the power cable that came with this hooked up to a, a USB power source. So I'm not quite sure what to expect here. And uh, I did actually look at the online manual uh, for this to see if it had any operating instructions but it just shows how to assemble this so I need to keep looking to see what these buttons are for and what it's supposed to do but uh, we'll plug this in and power it up okay well it's doing something so one of the green LEDs has come on I can see that one of the lasers is missing the sensor, the rest are all shining down into the heat shrink tubing. So before we go any further I'm going to adjust that, so I'm just going to get a soldering iron, heat up the uh, solder joints and adjust the uh, direction that the laser is pointing. You can see the dot down here, it should be uh, illuminating the uh, sensor. So I'll just try and adjust that, don't know if you're able to see this or not.
and uh, I'm assuming that if we interrupt the beams, as we heard uh, briefly there, we should get some tones. Well, it seems to be working. Try pushing a button, see what uh, happens. Maybe it'll launch something. Okay, it seems to put it into an automatic mode. Try pushing this one. Okay, so that changes the pitch. Okay, so this button changes the pitch and this button seems to put it into an automatic play mode. Well, it's quite fascinating. Okay, um, as I say, this is not a full review. This is really uh, looking at the kit itself and whether it was fun to assemble. And I'd say this is definitely a kit that was fun to assemble. It, um, it's got a, quite a nice uh, feel to it, nice components. It's a nice mix of um, build. You've got some sort of mechanical assembly as well as the uh, electronics. It's quite an interesting project. Works quite nicely. Got some quite good components in here, some sort of nice laser diodes. In fact, I'm going diodes with a lens, but um, even so, uh, still quite nice. Nice quality board, went together nicely, and uh, it works. So, quite a fascinating kit. Definitely worth what I paid for it, and um, I'd uh, recommend anyone that wants to experiment with. Uh, simple electronic kits. This is definitely one that's worth looking at. It uh, was an enjoyable kit to build. The um, lack of uh, instructions, as ever, I don't think it's a big issue. I think in some ways it makes the kit uh, better and I prefer to try and build them without looking at the instructions. Uh, maybe bad advice, um, often ignoring instructions is not a good idea. Uh, but I think it makes something like this quite interesting. If you get stuck and you can't figure something out, then of course look at the instructions. But this is quite a nice little kit, so uh, I fully recommend you pick one of these up. I got this off eBay, and um, as I say, if you want to know uh, what to search for, the kit is designated as an HA5083, and it's uh, uh, called a laser harp. And uh, I have no affiliation with the people that supply this, by the way. I'm just uh, giving my opinion on this kit and I think it was quite a nice one.